In the last episode, we heard old Waylon say, Okay, let's get this thing on the lift, get it up in the air, and see what we're dealing with under there. Well, let's see what we got here. You know, while I got this thing in the air, I need to put a tailpipe on it. Well, I don't guess I need to, but I think I will. Man, there's a bracket up there, a hanger that I can weld up. Look at the drive shaft in this thing. That's way bigger than the one in my three quarter ton. Huh, that's strange. It's just a big old fat tube and it goes from big and fat down to nothing. Huh, would hurt to see a little grease in that, probably. Let's move it around, that needs to be tightened up. That's why I wanted to get this thing on the lift. You just see things that I would never see crawling around underneath this thing. I think our transfer case is leaking pretty good, judging from everything that's thrown up there. Yeah. I don't know where all this is coming from exactly, but uh, I know we got a good axle up front. I will, uh, there's my little oil pan here, and uh, I need to change that too. I've got it tied off up in front. To, uh, anyway, I had some extra cord, I thought, but I need to move that back here on the sump. Oh, what else was it? Saw something a minute ago. Anyway, I need to tighten those U, tighten that U joint clamp for sure. Oh, oh the pumpkin. The rear end is not leaking. Look at that. As dry as that can be. I'll probably uh, check the pumpkin juice while I got it up. This U joint seems to be okay. So now, here's the. Uh, oh, oh my goodness. What do we got here? Cable. Well, we still got this part. But here's uh, here's what we're here for. This is this is why we came here today, just to address this mess. We got us a a little tiny. <laughs> oh, we got us a bungee. We got us a bungee holding that together. But I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure that it's broken. I don't know why it is dismantled. Uh, I think we're missing something. Isn't there supposed to be a cable that goes across or a bracket that it pulls or something? I'll have to look under there at that one. But uh, we'll go ahead and get this down and see see what we're looking at. But like I said, we got a we got a solid frame. Nothing wrong with the frame. That was uh, that was the one thing I looked at before i purchased it it's got some surface rust on it a little bit of scaling but uh it's it's pretty solid there's some uh, undercoating peeling off over here and uh it's rusty but it's not rusted through or anything all right i'm gonna perch you guys somewhere and get this down and try to find out why because Inquiring minds want to know. You know, I'm not a mechanic and I'm not a car builder. I'm just an old redneck having a good time banging around on this rusty old iron. So buckle up and hang on. Let's see what's going to happen next around here. And we're going to shoot over and pick up old whaling wire over there. Hey, welcome to Rat Rod. My name's William Wire, and don't ever do what we do here on this channel. Little baby, little baby bungee cord. Isn't that cute? I gotta turn that heat off. And it must be almost 50 degrees in here, Mr. Heavy Chevy. Just can't handle it. Whoo! All right. Um, I 
What in the world is going on? Maybe it's all here. You know? It's probably rusted up. I'm going to shoot some uh, PB Blaster in this uh, in this cable here. If you can see what I'm pointing at. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to try and lube this up a little. I'm sure it needs it. <laughs> okay, I'll get back with you when I find something of interest. Well, I believe from this kink right here tells me where that uh, eyelet goes. What it is, is there's a little short rod and I think it fits right in here. And it catches this cable. It's kind of got a hook on the end or I twist it into an eye on the end and this slips into it. And then over here is a longer one that uh, I'm supposed to hook in here, I guess. And it comes over and catches here. And then this is running down. There's supposed to be a couple of, couple of little eyelets that drop down here that that runs through to give it a straight pull uh, up through here. It'll go under that uh, under that drive shaft. I got it over right now, but it'll go under that. I, I There may be a piece missing out there too, uh, but I'm gonna go pick up that truck. I'm gonna go out there in the cold and the damp and the dreariness and the dark and pick up that truck with the tractor. And block it up and get under there and see if I can get some bracketry and I see why the speedometer don't work see this in there's, there's supposed to be something attached to this right here like the rest of it okay nothing left to do but just do it so let's go get the tractor and go out there I don't even know what kind of tools I need uh, I think those I think those rods just hook in these holes, but then there's these brackets that probably weld on. So uh, those eyes that that cable runs through. So I'll probably just build those. Uh, I don't know. Let's go uh, pick it up and take a look and see what we need. Yo, too. Well, I got another door here, so I may as well take it out as I go. That's five doors, five extra doors I have. Not that many good. <laughs> okay. This one's pretty light with the door coming off and the, and the glass out. Don't wait, Mike. Oh, I'm going to knock my light up. There we go. All right. Just unplug it. Unplug it and get to get. So there's that one little guy, that little hook I was talking about. But the other one is gone. It's uh, it's quite a bit longer. So I'll probably have to manufacture one of those. And I think when I get it all set up, it'll tell me how long that other one needs to be. Oh, I need one of these little guys. I need one of these uh, connectors right here. Let me snag one of these. I'm going to need uh, a missing one and I'm going to take both hands to get it. I'm pretty sure. I just think that good. Uh, maybe. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> okay. There it is. <laughs> That's all I need. Alright. Well, I guess we're going back to the house. We didn't really collect too much.
Boy, we uh, made a huge haul, didn't we? <laughs> it's cold out there too, man. The stars are shining, it's clear. It's supposed to snow really big time tomorrow and Sunday, but I, mean, I don't know. It's just clear and cold out there tonight. But yeah, that's our, <laughs> that's our bounty right there. Okay. Well, let's try and run a little bit of cable, at least on one side, to start with here and see what happens. This cable is not set up exactly like the donor truck. And I, uh, I went and got that other cable because I thought it might be just a little bit shorter than this one. That's what I would like to have, but it's actually a little bit longer. I'm just talking to myself here, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it helps. So, I told you about this little link right here, this hook. That's got to hold the cable. And there's got to be one like that on this side, but it's longer. Or at least on the other truck it's longer. But, with all this excess cable that I have, I'm thinking it might have to be shorter. Yeah, I think if I put a short one right here, if I make one just about like the other one, let me uh, get up there and make sure that my brake is released. Yeah, I'm going to get this thing down so I can check on that foot brake and see what the position is. Well, I just noticed... Um, something you know I took this this really good good condition exhaust off that donor truck and uh, I don't think this is supposed to look like that I mean I'm just guessing hmm that's funny ain't it yeah guess I'm uh, guess I'm gonna have to reroute my exhaust pipe a little bit <laughs> yeah, I'm either going to have to put it up through there or bring it all the way under. Is this wrong? Should I not have done that? Was that wrong? <laughs> Should I not have done that? I tell you, I got to plead ignorance on this thing because if anyone had said anything to me at all when I first started here that that sort of thing was frowned upon... <laughs> You know, because I've worked in a lot of offices, and <laughs> I tell you, people do that all the time. You're fired. I'll have to go get the piece that I took off, uh, because I'll probably use some of it. <laughs> ah, that's funny right there. I, I don't care who you are, that's funny. What about the whole Christmas spirit thing? Any flexibility there? <laughs> nah. Well, I guess I got another little chore to take care of. Uh, it appears that we're going to have dual exhausts on this truck. Unless I loop it down under that tri shaft. <laughs> oh boy, we're having fun now, ain't we? Mm, no, think that's gonna be tight enough, but we'll give it a try. I don't know, maybe. Maybe too tight. I don't know. Hmm, I can always loosen it a little. Let's put just a little bit of a pull on it and see what happens. Maybe I'll leave you guys under here and then uh, give it a try and then you guys can tell me which way I need to go. If I can loosen it a little bit or tighten it a little bit. I think it could be a little bit looser than that, but I'm not sure how much play 
there is in that pedal. I'm going to look under my other truck and see how taunt. Oh, taunt. That's a good word, isn't it? Taunt. Taut. Taut. Or that other truck is way looser than that. That's really, it's really sloppy. But you know, this has got some slack in it. So the other one's probably too loose. I don't know. Uh, I was going to pull that up a little bit and bend it, but you know, maybe I'll just give it one try. Yeah, you guys just take a look. Just hang out right there and wait for me. Take a look and uh, let me know what you think. working in there so and I expect that might loosen up a little bit uh, I'm gonna lube these cables up real good back here and now I'm gonna deal with this exhaust I don't know yet if I'm gonna just come under it cut it off here up there and come down and, and back over and back into this cross pipe I've got a piece here, this piece, I'll let you see it, that piece will come out at a pretty good angle, something like that, yeah, a little higher up, and I could uh, cut this and put a 45 on there and shoot her out the back. I think I'm going to check the pumpkin juice and these diffs, these differentials, differentials, as Rat Rods for Africa says, differentials. And uh, yeah, and maybe maybe call it a night. It's getting kind of late. So, but something's going to happen with this exhaust, guarantee. All right. Ooh, we got a cardin. Cardin uh, joint there. I didn't know that. Is that what they call them? My Cadillac had, uh, my hearse had three, two, three of them, three or four of them. I don't know. All right. It's about enough right now. I'm going to check this uh, level in these duffs. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me clean that off a little bit. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, buddy. It's all right now, Mama. Any way you do. Yeah, it's pretty much bone dry. I can tell. Yeah, and take the whole, whole bottle. And then some, I reckon. Wow. He's thirsty. He's way thirsty. Well, I'm glad I took a look at that. Yeah, pretty snug. Let's go to the back one and see what we got. I gotta tighten that front view joint too. Don't you guys let me forget that. Yeah, 
I think we're okay on this one. We're good on the pumpkin juice here. Okay. Let's uh let's wrap this thing up and we're gonna we're gonna pretend that we didn't see these rusty, rusty, rusty brake lines. Ooh. Just flaking off rust. Just I better stop. I'm gonna poke a hole in it. Mmm. Hmm. Well, I ran across something that's pretty neat that I'm going to share with you guys, and I don't get paid to say this, but um, if you do as much fabricating as I do, I think you'll find these pretty handy. See that's rolled around and got that flap on both sides. And so you can come up underneath something and, and, uh, and smooth it out with the top side, uh, where sometimes you can't flip it over and do it. I, I'm going to give these a try. I, they look good. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna be happy with those. camera this is just too good this looks like grapes of wrath <laughs> we're gonna haul these old tires all that stuff came out of the back of that plow truck so uh Noah and I are gonna haul them out of here and put them somewhere I don't know <laughs> oh yeah this is nice what was fun last night out there crawling around under that truck and I sent you a picture being out there in the cold and you know you answered my text at 2.45 in the morning. <laughs> you must what have been say? playing video games. No, this I wasn't is... awake. Oh, well that's when the text came in. You answered uh, something about, I don't, I don't remember. Oh, I was talking about, oh I sent you that little clip about having to make it dual exhaust. And you oh. said sweet, but. That came in at 2.45 in the morning, so I thought, he, he's still up. <laughs> or he was up. Oh, let's get ready to rumble. Getting an exhaust put together on this thing. Um, yeah, he's over there grinding the paint off of that other glass pack. And then we'll be putting some tailpipes on this thing and we'll have a brand new custom dual exhaust. Uh, we got our exhaust tips on there. We ran it all the way out this time. Before it was just dumping out the mufflers and we're pretty excited to see what this thing sounds like. Well, I guess I need the camera back here to hear it. Come on down. We got dual exhaust now. Said the emergency brake works. Mm. That was what this whole mission started out to be, just fix the emergency brake. Oh, I forgot to weld up that, that cross pipe. <laughs> Remember I cut yeah. that out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back up. Okay, I'll show I'll show the world what I what I did and I forgot to cap that off. <laughs> Is that piece big enough? Yeah. Cool. Just like that. Alright. You want to clean it up a little, grind it, rust off, and I'll get the welder out again. Again. All right. Well, let's 
see what this thing sounds like. Yeah. You hungry? Get it? No, you're not. No. You just had that 19 pound hamburger. How big? That was a double, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so that's about half a pound. <laughs> <laughs> a little guacamole, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I get. I like it. I don't get hamburger much, but if I do, I get that jalapeno burger. It's a good one. All right, now I gotta change out of fuel line on this thing and get rid of that old that old rotten ethanol eating fuel line and put a new one on there picked some up today but first i gotta feed my body paint job 2.0 <laughs> um we're gonna use spray paint this time Well, I'm in the process of swapping out these fuel lines because uh, we all know what happens when that ethanol eats up those old gas lines. Ideally, it would be hard plumbed, have a hard line all the way from the fuel pump to the car, but. Well, that's not the case right now. Okay. Throw the breather on. Start this thing up. Make sure there's no leaks. Maybe I'll just do that first. Fire the hole! spray a couple more coats of uh, yellow paint or striping and then touch up the black still got to paint the doors oh uh, I don't know Noah kind of likes them <laughs> just ragged just the way they are oh uh, but I'll show you Noah's design on the exhaust tips we got yeah we got a nice dual exhaust now sounds pretty good too there's a <laughs> There we go. Yeah. That something? Pretty, pretty snazzy, huh? Oh, you don't back into anything. But with these backup lights, oh yeah, we'll be good. We'll be good. Well, I had this driveway paved about 31 years ago, I guess it was, when I bought this property. And it was just mud. You couldn't get in and out of here. The lady who had owned this place lived in that old house down here and it was really not livable but she lived in it anyway and she would she would uh, ski out in the morning and leave her car to, uh, down at the bottom of the hill and she'd ski down to her car in the morning and then she would carry her skis and snowshoe back in at night and I didn't think that sounded like much fun so I had the road paved. And the joke was at the time, <laughs> if your driveway costs more than your house, you might be a redneck. And that was, <laughs> that was, that was actually the truth. But anyway, um, the reason I didn't get a blade at the time is because that pavement is a real thin ribbon. It's only about inch and a half thick. Well, probably a little bit more than that now because I had it resurfaced. But in the beginning, after a few years, I don't know how many years, five or so, uh, it uh, it packed down in the in the tire path, you know, and so that left a crown in the middle of the road. And, and that's why I didn't use a blade because I surely would have plowed up that crown. I would have ripped that pavement up. 
and I used a snowblower and I could uh, you know adjust the pitch on that and whatnot and keep from digging up my my driveway and that worked fine and it still works fine but I uh, had it resurfaced and that crown is no longer there so my driveway is pretty level across from side to side and when it's hard frozen I'm not worried about doing damage with the plow but on a day like today it's it's thawing out there there's about three inches of snow out there no big deal when I was using the tractor sometimes I wouldn't even plow unless I had four got four inches but it's melting and so I know the pavement's soft softer today and I don't want to damage that and I um, I've been looking at some uh, some ways to avoid damaging the pavement and I, the one I kind of like the best is R. Peak sent me a video of what he had done on his plow when he was still plowing snow up in Maine and what it was was a piece of uh, hard plastic or nylon real hard stuff and, uh, and he said it held up pretty good so we'll try that out and we'll see what we think of it and I'll let you know okay Another thing I've been uh, looking at some YouTube videos and what they do is they split a piece of pipe and uh, and put a piece of pipe across the bottom of there and that's that's rounded so it floats and it won't dig into the pavement. And that's an idea, but I kind of like the idea that hard plastic or nylon, if I could uh, find something like that, um, I may just buy a piece of Trex decking. I don't think it'll hold up very long, but you know so what if it if it only lasted one winter sometimes i only plow maybe four or five times the entire season and then other times i might plow 20 times in a season so for the cost it might be worth it to try a piece of that it wouldn't cost much to slap a piece of that on there i don't expect it would hold up very good but uh it would if i had to replace it a few times that would certainly be better than replacing my pavement so that's kind of uh, some of you were wondering why i didn't do this many years ago and that's why because i didn't want to rip up my road and with the snowblower i could avoid that i could it's got some shoes on each side that lets it kind of float and it doesn't dig in so that's the story on that and i think right now while i'm waiting for this yellow paint to dry before I take this thing out in the weather, maybe I'll slap on a coat of black paint on the doors. I posted, I posted on Instagram Noah's design here for the where the exhaust, exhaust tips come out and how far and all that. And one guy said, "Oh my shins!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes better pay attention. That's for sure. Anyway, we're having fun. It sounds good. But here's the thing, there are too many trucks on the internet named Krusty, especially on YouTube. So we need to find another name for this truck. I always keep talking about how sinister it looks coming up the driveway. But, so I told Noah maybe we should call it the Sinister Minister or the Hostile Apostle or uh, the Radical Sabbatical. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I think we'll leave it up to you guys. You guys put down in the comments what you think this plow truck should be called and then Noah and I will look them over and, and we'll uh, settle in on a name alright still got a finished stripe on the door got the doors finished up but it don't have the yellow stripe on it yet but we're almost there and I'm liking the dual exhaust alright I brought that idle down a little bit that sounds better don't it Okay guys, that's going to do it for part two here on Wayland Wire's Old Iron. This was a little bit different kind of thing, a two-part video. But uh, we're all wrapped up now, so I just want to thank you for stopping by and hanging out in the shop uh, with Noah and myself here. We, we really enjoy having you guys here, and uh, I hope you had a good time. And we'll be seeing you real soon right here on Wayland Wire's Old Iron. And, well, you know the deal. I sure do appreciate you. See you soon.